Hey, everybody. This is Jeff Turner, your host for Benefits in Brief. Uh, welcome to another session. Uh, we have a great topic today. Super excited um, to have the guests that we have on, on our show today. It's a good friend of mine, Rodney Bolton, down south from HR Biz. He's in a Lyra Group company as well. How's it going, Rodney? Excellent, Jeff. Thanks for having me on your show today. You bet. Yeah, it's good to <laughs> have you, man. Um, we've got a kind of NorCal, SoCal little vibe going today, right? <laughs> you got the SoCal thing you're bringing, and I'm bringing NorCal. So I'm ready to rock and roll. So just kind of um, staying in um, in tune with what we um, envisioned this, this podcast would be, we're talking about topics that are business related that impact the business we've done a lot um we started this at the pandemic and quite frankly um it's been well received and then and depending on the topic we get a good good uh turnout but regardless we're, we're we don't care if we get one person or none we take this information we we uh put it on our website we put it out on social media we're we're famous we're on youtube now you know so we got got that going too so uh, it's super cool. Uh, what we're going to talk about today is, a, is an interesting topic. And in my industry, um, as an employee benefits consultant, this uh, particular solution, if you will, um, is something that we come up against every once in a while. And, and occasionally uh, it works for a client. Um, a lot of times we find that um, it doesn't work really well. And that's what we're going to talk about. So topic is what's the deal with PEOs so PEOs are something that um uh, Rodney can get into this in a second and how they work but um the concept basically is you're you're um handing off your employees to another entity and they're they're basically taking them from A to Z from um enrollment to termination and everything in between handing all the HR issues and there are certain uh or aspects or questions that we want to cover today. And I'll just summarize them real quick before we jump into them. So if you're a small employer and you're considering a, a PEO, this is going to be a great um, podcast for you. Uh, we're going to do a deep dive into it. You know, the advantages, the disadvantages, the questions you should ask you really that you need to know. Um, and are all PEOs created equal? You know, good, better, best are, are some better than others. And I think that's something that's very important to understand. Not all of them um, are as good as the, uh, the guy down the street. So, and what kind of questions should you ask them? What What do you need to know? So we're going to kind of jump into that. Rodney, um, why don't you go ahead and just kind of introduce yourself and tell tell folks, uh, you know, who you are, your background, where you came from, why you started uh, HR Biz. Ah, uh, thanks, Jeff. So I'm Rodney Bolton. I'm a certified HR consultant with over 20 years of experience. I have a master's degree in human resource management, as well as certification, senior certification from uh, the Society of Human Resource Management. HR Biz was really formulated 10 years ago because they saw a need to really assist employers with some of the day-to-day -day HR issues that they have. Another thing that I found is that many of the PEOs are charging our clients just four to 5% of their gross revenue for human resource services, so like at that point, here's a good opportunity for me to come in, start a great company, and not only that, provide a service that many clients really enjoy. So for the last ten years, we have this is focused on clients in a variety of industries. We do manufacturing, agriculture, healthcare, etc. And I joined the Lair Group about eighteen months ago, so I can connect with people like Jeff Turner throughout the state. Rodney, you're get, we're getting a, you're having a hard time picking you up your voice. Oh, you are? Is it better now? Yeah, there you go. Yeah. So I joined HR Biz roughly, I joined Alera Group about 18 months ago. And during that time, I my ideal was to really to come into a group that allowed me to be able to work with benefit brokers and PNC brokers so that we could combine our services to go after larger larger scale accounts as well as combat the PEO. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, Rodney, to that point, you and I worked together in helping a, a company come out of a, a PEO, 
Um, we're not going to name any names today, but, um, you know, you ask you that question, um, Rodney, in, in your experience, um, are there, are there situations where it does make sense for a small employer to, to, to go into a PEO? What's your thought? So one of the things, Jeff, I would say if a small employer wanted to venture into a PEO, it would be because they have an extremely high mod rate near a 400 or 500 mod rate. And they couldn't get insurance from anyone else except for state compensation insurance fund. In that case, I would say, yeah, go ahead and join the PO, but yeah, be careful what you get into. Really take a look at your contract and see, can you get out of it? Because once you're in, it's a lot easier to get in a PO than it is to get out. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you're saying that on the worker comp side, it might make sense from that standpoint. And, and why would that be? Can you kind of explain what the, how that, that? Sure. So that really lends more to economy of scale. A PAO at that particular point, um, because of their size, may be able to offer them a better work comp rate, a lower premium. But again, there's a catch-22. That premium may only be good for the first year. And the second year, when they hit the market with established loss runs, it's going to trigger a renewal that could be 20 to 30 to 40 percent higher. And so what I tell people is that when you join, ask them to give you a projection of your total cost for three years. So maybe you'll save quite a bit on your first year, but your second year and your third year, you'll probably end up making it up. And lastly, if it sounds too good to be true, it is too good to be true. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to get into that second. Uh, I, I kind of, I, I'm trying to be fair, right. To the PEO market, if you will. Um, especially those who might be uh, watching this, but um, why, if I'm a small employer, okay, the workers' comp it makes sense to me, but why would I even consider a PEO? What is the attraction to an employer? What What is it that, you know, hey, this is the, the holy grail, right, over here? Yeah. So, Jeff, I think what makes it really attractive to employers is it's one check. So they don't have to chase HR. They don't have to chase P&C. They don't have to chase benefits and payroll and sometimes 401k they can simply just write one check at the end of the month and if you're short on time that may be a good option for you mm -hmm. yeah so it's kind of the, the the idea that i can just hand off all of that responsibility to an entity that's going to manage all of that for me as correct well, it benefits the insurance as well hr at all all sounds good. It's all wrapped up in one nice little package, right? Correct. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, if I'm an employer, I'm looking at that and I'm thinking, well, you know, I'm a small employer, especially at, say, you know, 15, 20 employees. And I don't want to, I don't have an office manager. I don't want to deal with payroll. I don't want to deal with, you know, hiring, firing, and, and I can get the benefits at, you know, um, a large group rate, composite rates, workers' comp rate. So it all sounds really good to me. So I get in, I'm involved in the, in the PEO. So let's talk a little bit about what I really should be asking them when I am looking at this. You know, what what are the, the nitty gritty details that, that really I need to be aware of? Yeah. So I think the first thing you want to ask the PEO is how does their invoice work? You know, what are they paying for? Is that invoice consistent for a 12-month period, a 24-month period, a 36-month period? I think it's really important that you really know what you're getting into. The second thing I always ask is, who is going to be your month-to-month, -month, day day-to-day representative? Is there one person you can reach out to, or is it going to be a Ferris wheel? Right. And then lastly, what I think is really, really critical is with the PEO, right? Are they, do they understand your business? Right. Because a PEO sometimes work in a very cookie cutter um, manner. And it's important that they have a concept of like what you're actually doing. If they want to ensure a healthcare facility the same as they would a factory 
I don't think it's going to work. So you really got to know, you know, what you're getting into, what's the contract, who is your representative, and have, do you have experience in your industry? Mm -hmm. So when you say what you're getting into, are you referring to the actual costs associated? Exactly. With what are the costs? What are the cost breakdowns? Uh -huh. What does it cost for co workers' compensation? What does it cost for benefit? Is there a bin admin system in there? Right? How does that bin admin system work? Will you be enrolling the employees or will they be enrolling the employees? You know, benefit design is very intricate, right? And so it's important for us to know as employers, right? What are we giving our employees, right? Because we want to give them benefits that they really can utilize and really it becomes kind of like a, um, a, a feather in our cap so that we're really providing something that our employees like and want to utilize, right? Which is a really good retention tool. So you must ask them that, right? What's in those benefits? Are you going to be doing it? Do you have a bin ad? Does the bin ad enroll? Do you enroll? When do you start open enrollment? What information is sent? How do you do your your enrollments with the plus one with the family? There's just it's just a, the same questions you would ask your P and C, your benefit or your HR. You have to ask mm -hmm. the PEO. Yeah. Yeah, I want to I want to dive a little deeper into this part of it um, before we talk about contracts and um, you know service side of it. So, um, are all PEOs transparent in their and what they charge? No. Okay. Yeah, let's talk about that. <laughs> yeah. So I think what happens is that the one I find that is the most elusive is the admin costs. So generally speaking, somewhere muddled in their monthly invoice would be an administration cost. That cost I've seen it anywhere from 2% of your payroll to 7% of your payroll. But trying to get a direct and consistent answer regarding the admin cost is very difficult. And what I say is before you sign on the dotted line, find out what that admin cost is. Does it cover payroll? Is it for stamps? And let's hope it's not for stamps, which I was told one time, because 4% of my total annual payroll just for stamps and mailing forms seems to be outrageous. So find out what that cost is, right? And if you're looking to be the PEO, that's the kind of like the main thing that you really want to look at because you can eliminate that admin cost and utilize that those funds in other areas like for hr or to balance out the benefit costs etc yeah so if i'm looking at a peo and i ask um the company the peo um representative what are your administration costs they should be able to to break that down for me correctly, right? If they don't, then that's that's a red flag. Yeah, they should be, but I find many of the sales reps are really trained not to know what that cost is, mm -hmm. and the reason why they don't want to, they don't know what the cost is because if they tell you the cost and you don't agree with the cost, well, chances are you're not going to sign with them, right? And so what I encourage you to do, too, if you're meeting with the PEO, don't only meet with the sales rep, right? Meet with several different members of the PEO team so that you can find out what are their duties, what costs are associated with what they're giving you, right? And really separate the sales pitch from the actual plan service that you're getting. Right, yeah. I think this is a really important um, aspect of it. This seems to be kind of the um, the area where people get surprised and um, are you know got that get that that um, that bite, if you will. So um, I heard recently from a very reliable source of mine, a good friend of mine who's a labor law attorney who uh, was involved 
that we get, was got a call um, from somebody that had a PEO, and, and it turned out that um, they'd been you know paying for workers' comp for many many years, and they they had a claim finally, and they came to find out that there was actually no insurance. Um, I, I don't know who the PEO was, but I think that's another area I would, like you had mentioned, I want to know who, who's the carrier. Can you validate that? You know, you're, you're offering me workers comp insurance. I need to know for sure that I have workers comp insurance. Um, employee benefits seems pretty straightforward, but the workers comp, I was, I was, uh, appalled at, at hearing that, that, that was very, yeah. very, very concerning. Yeah. So, and Jeff, let me jump in on that. So I think indemnification is critical as well because you have sometimes there's, there's often cases where you may not know what's going to be covered. So it's really important to find out what your coverage, what you're getting for your coverage. Who's indemnified? Is the employer covering the employees? Is the owner of the company covered? You know, it's a joint employer situation right so they become co-employers right um you have to really take a deeper dive into that and say what does co-employment mean right when am i covered when aren't i covered all right and so that's really significant because let's say for example you have a worker shop injury on your facility and the peo picks up the coverage but then Somewhere down the line, they're suing the CEO personally, right? And then you have to find out, hmm, are they indemnified for that? Or if it's a libel suit, are they indemnified for that? Sexual harassment, are they covered for that, right? So there's a lot of coverage issues that come up all the time. In that particular story where the PO didn't have coverage, I've heard tons of times, hmm. right? Yeah, so... Yeah. Um, that, that brings that thought to my mind, and I wanted to ask you this question. Um, so you, you just used a phrase called co-employment, and that's what you said. That's the arrangement then when you're entering a, a PEO. So what that sounds like to me, what that tells me is that I still have liability as an employer, even though I've handed off all these responsibilities. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I think the tricky part about that is to really discern when you're liable and when you're not liable. And I think that common sense would tell us that they're not going to take the burden of the greatest um, liability, right? So I think it really takes some really um, astute work on an employer's part to really find out what type of coverage they have. I had recently a, a gentleman who's in the construction industry and he has to provide certificates of insurance for various sites. And he's a great guy. He probably has about 400 employees. But one of the things that he found out is the certs were not getting to the site. And they weren't getting to um, where they were supposed to be in a timely manner. And he had a couple accidents, right? And it really created issues with uh, where to cover because you didn't have the certificate. At what point were they covered? Well, why didn't they have it? And although in the end it was all straightened out, but it was a big mess. He ended up getting fired from a $16 million job before that, right? So something as simple as producing certificates, you need to know who's going to do it. When are they going to do it? How are they going to do it? You know, are they going to email them to you? Are you going to pick them up? Are they going to drop them off? So there's so many little details that you take for granted, right? that may or may not be covered yeah yeah well well said i think that's really important uh so we're talking we, we kind of moved from the admin fees to the liability aspect of they're both very important questions that need to be asked right um you mentioned um the contract so are all contracts the same um what 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 is my um with my flexibility, you know, am I stuck for a whole year? Or am I stuck for two years? Um, yeah. The... So pretty much all the contracts are pretty close to the same, mm -hmm. right? But generally speaking, you are stuck for one year. So 
at the end of one, the year, the PELs usually go month to month. However, that's never clarified at the time you sign your contract. So it can be really difficult to just jump out. Maybe you missed the end of the 30 days. Maybe you've already paid payroll taxes, right? If you're paying, you know, approximately 3.4% of payroll tax of the first 7,000, maybe you want to wait until you paid that 7,000. Or if you switch, how would you know exactly how much you paid? Would they provide you information on exactly what you paid so that you could subsequently make an adjustment as, we, as in the case of the client that we work together, it required several adjustments to make sure that they didn't overpay their payroll tax. In their particular case, the PEO continued paying that 3.4% long past the $7,000 threshold, which created an issue for my team really to try and figure out where the heck was that money, which later we found out it was PEO profit. Mm, yeah. Um, is there a early withdrawal penalty that I that they can charge? Is I'm sure that's yeah. So there's a massive early cancellation yeah. if you leave the PEO. You, in my experience, it's never worth it. If you signed it, stay the year. It's just not worth the disruption in terms of the penalty. Knowing if you have proper coverage, the benefits. Will something go wrong with the benefits? Will they pick up an injury if an injury happened? If you had a catastrophic medical situation, who? what would happen? I think what you really want to do, if that's the case, about the six month in, you really want to start preparing to get out. Look at what your loss runs are, gather that information, look at your benefits and see what your usage is check and see, you know, what doctors, your employees like, et cetera, and what are the critical HR needs. And then really the next five and a half, six months should be spent on moving forward and um, leaving the PEO. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I do want to come back to that point um, in a little bit. You know, if I'm exiting a PEO, what steps I should consider and how soon I should do it. There are, there are some areas that... Uh, are very important to know. So let me ask you this question. Um, let's say uh, somebody's uh, looking at a PEO, they've narrowed it down to, to one or two. Um, what would be their great greatest asset or resource in terms of somebody being able to review the, or who um, to review contracts? Is that something that um, you could do? Yeah, I think that's something we could do. We also have um, another partner in Alera that does something similar. But I think what they want to do is take an internal look and an external look. So what I mean by that is have the PEO give you a thorough explanation of every detail and make sure you have a complete understanding. Then I think what you want to do is get it out to people like myself or one of our Alera partners that can really help kind of unwind mm -hmm. that invoice and really take a deeper dive into exactly what you're doing, right? Yeah. Um, I'm glad you brought that up. We do have, um, your, in addition to yourself, we have a, a, another firm that um, is very involved in in this uh, this discussion. Yeah. Uh, you're representing, you're representing uh, uh, the West Coast and uh, we can, we can uh, certainly facilitate that. Um, so let's talk a little bit about, um, you mentioned uh, the representatives and who I'm, you know, who I'm working with on a daily basis. Um, and some of the bullet points that you sent over to me in this, in this regard is, um, do they have, a, do they, can I get access to a resume and, and a bio on them? Is it somebody that um, is going to be there every day or is it, or is that going to be a different person that I'm talking to on a daily basis? Do they handle payroll, HR, risk management? What's their background in each of these areas? Um, can we meet them? So th those are some of the bullet points you mentioned. So you want to speak to that a little bit? Yeah, yeah, Jeff. So in that case, I would treat them just like I would treat a new hire. You know, what, what are your attributes? What can you do? 
what have you done? Not what you say you've done, but show me your resume. Can I have references? Can I speak to people regarding specific skills and specific abilities, right? And really look at that as a partnership, not as, hey, we came in, we got a great rate, trust us, and we'll move forward. I think it's the opposite. I think that you really have to have an eye of suspicion. And I really think that you have to really want to do your homework. You wouldn't bring an employee in and he says, hey, I used to work at NASA and I was a top scientist. And you say, okay, you're hired. It, it's, but why, so why would you do it with a PEO? Right. Yeah. Yeah. You need to know who you're working with. You got to know what you're working with. Yeah. That was one of the complaints that we had in the, um, the employer that we took out of the PEO was that they were talking to somebody different on a regular basis. They weren't getting correct. It. Yes. Yes. That's yeah. very correct. Yeah, they weren't getting the TLC and the love that was promised. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just, it's just something that happens all the time. Yeah. 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 I think that's super important. Um, you did bring up uh, Ben Admin. So correct. What does that involve and what questions should I ask around benefit administration? And when you say bid admin, is that are you encompassing HRIS? You, I mean, the whole the whole banana, if you will. Yeah. So I think when I when I address bid admin, Jeff, what I'm talking about is how are they going to administer the benefits? What does that entail and what does that imply? Right. One thing I found is that. It's really critical to understand how the benefits are going to be administered because you want to know when's open enrollment, what tools do they use for open enrollment, what system do they use for open enrollment, right? So all the typical questions that you would normally ask of, of your clients, those are the same questions you're going to ask of the PEO, right? And so I, I believe it's just fundamentally critical to understand what is the plan design? What's the plan design look like? Do you have ease? Do you have a self-enrollment portal? You know, particularly since many people are working at home these days, I think it's really important to know, can they enroll from home? If they can, where does that information go? Who checks that information? There's just a plethora of things that you know better than I do that are associated with the benefit administration that really fall through the cracks when you move over to the PEO. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I think you'd mentioned, you know, how much training will they provide? In that Correct. Right? Um, and there are, there are been admin systems that are better than others. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> others so that that's a yeah. that's also another important one because if i'm handing if i'm handing this off and the intent is to get stuff off my plate and i'm still having to do you know to be involved then it's not working correctly <laughs> it's not working correctly and jeff i'll tell you a situation i had recently we have a furniture company for about 300 employees very highly productive company that sells roughly a billion dollars a year in furniture. So they thought going to the PEO would be the solution for because of the benefit administration. It was a nightmare. They found that they have people at the port of LA. They have people at nighttime at working in the weekends, uh, driving to Texas, trucks all over. And they didn't account for the movement of the staff and how would they actually connect with them? And what they did was they, in essence, set three days. I think it was a Tuesday, a Thursday, and a following Tuesday. And if you couldn't get enrolled. But you had some people that had been to the office in years. Some of the logistics people were working at home. Some of the trucking people were on the road. And I think those are the questions you have to ask, right? What's the dynamics of your company? Because every company kind of has a different dynamic, right? And I think that that's a great thing that working with you and your team, that you guys are really able to say, hey, um, how do you want to do this enrollment? Do you want us to come there? Where are the people? Are we going to go to them? Are they going to come to us? Are there people working at night, weekends, et cetera? There's a lot of factors that you need to incorporate. Right. Yeah. 
Yeah, I just was looking over some of the uh, questions that uh, you'd sent over to me, and there was one that popped out, and I think this is uh, really important to talk about. Um, is the PEO a strategic partner? And in today's environment, uh, I talk a lot about strategic um, planning. When I sit down with a, an employer, do they do their employee benefits match their mission, their company mission statement? Do you actually have an employee benefits um, mission and a strategy, um, is, or is it transactional? Um, so I think this is a really important area to, to consider and to and kind of project and look forward. Is the PEO going to help me get to where I want to go, right, as an employer? Um, yeah. Many of them are still in the age where they may have kids, right? And I think it's really going to be critical, Jeff, to understand what's your demographics, right? What's important um, for medical? What's important for medical insurance, right? Do they want medical insurance? Do they want what particular benefit do they want? Do they want child care? Do they need maternity care? We just lost them. That require a strategic partner. Yeah. We, we, we kind of lost you a little bit there. You were cutting out. That's okay. No, no worries. I think, you know, to be fair to uh, the PEO um, partners out there, <laughs> um, I probably will have uh, – one of them on on the podcast at some point to uh, to yeah. kind of tell their story, if you will. Um, I think there are some good ones out there, but um, there's definitely some really really bad ones. Yeah, and, and Jeff, I think this the the notion really is not whether they're good ones or bad ones. The question is, is it right for you? Yeah, right. Yeah, and yeah, that's important. That's that's good. So that's what. And so the, in total honesty, there again, there are situations where they're right for people. But if they're not right for you, right, the only way you're going to find that out is by taking a deeper dive and really understanding what's out there for you. Sure. So what other solutions can they explore? You know, let's say, you know, I'm a, a, a small employer. I'm growing. You know, I started out really small, but, you know, Things are going great, and I'm up to 25, 30, 40, 50 employees now, um, and I just quite, can't quite, um, you know, either don't have the financial wherewithal or find the right HR um, support staff. Um, what other solutions can we bring to the table? You know, I think that one of the other solutions I like to say is more of an ASO model. And an ASO model is where you would take a qualified HR, a qualified benefit, a PNC rep, and a payroll partner, and really come together and function like a PO, but without the co employment or all the other things that sometimes drive us crazy. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so there was a, a little uh, plug there. And uh, who 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 would you recommend, Rodney? Then who who's who's the go to for that? <laughs> you know, I, I I have to start with me. You know, yeah, yeah, and if you yeah. ever want to um, have a conversation, you could reach out to me and just really pick my brain. One of the things is I'm into solutions that work for everyone, the win win. So I'm not going to advise you to come to, to myself, Jeff, or Scott for benefits and PNC and HR if I don't think it's a good solution. Let's just sit down, have a nice objective conversation about what are your needs? Where do you see yourself? Where do you want to go? And I think that as long as it's strategic in nature, it we can always come up with a concept. Look, I recommended BVSI to a client one time, right? It's just their product and what they had was so unique that I said, you're not ready yet. And about a year later, he came back and said, hey, you know what? I did what you said. Are you ready to sign me? I said, absolutely, buddy. Right? Because he had to straighten some things out. He had to straighten some things out financially. Right? Yeah. Yeah, I agree totally. Yeah. So Allura as a group, um, that's one of the reasons why, in the first place, why we formed Allura. 
from the start is to be able to better service our clients and to bring experts into the discussion, the strategic discussion, like like Rodney and HR and and Scott Minnith um, on the PNC side and myself on the employee benefit side. And there are some, believe me, um, on my side, employee benefit side, um, I have some of the best minds in my industry at my disposal across the nation. I mean, some really, really bright people that are doing some incredible things and the same on the workers cop side. So we can, we can like to Rodney's point, you know, let's just have a discussion. You know, the chances are, that we can solve a problem with internally with the the Alera group. Would you agree with that, Rodney? Yeah, I always think it's a hundred percent true. And I think that really what I like about the Alera group is that we're nationwide. So right. we're working with clients now in Minnesota, New Jersey, <laughs> Boston, Florida, North Carolina, et cetera. And it's really seamless when you have so many great partners. Yeah. Yeah. Is there any industry that uh, we won't talk to? No, I'm pretty much industry agnostic and I um, yeah. have clients across the board. So we're ready to go in pretty much any industry that I know of. Right. Yeah, I would agree with that. Um, we have a lot of experts in different vertical markets. You yeah. can easily um, pick up the phone and, and bring in one of those specialists for sure. So. Um, well, Rodney, uh, we're about a quarter after the hour. We normally run about 30 minutes, but I thought it was important that we really hit all of the, the key questions, advantages, disadvantages for anyone that's considering a PEO. Um, so I wanted to go a little bit longer, but is there anything else you want to add to this before, um, you know, we, yeah, what are the things I do want to add is some of the experience that Jeff and I have to working together is that we're able to assess the PEO and give you a proposal. And I think that's really critical because if you look at the proposal, then you can compare the PEO apples to apples, all right? And employers need things that are tangible. Like, what is my HR? What are we going to do? What does it cost? The same with you. What are the benefits? What do the benefits cost? What's it going to do? And so that's very critical for us, right? D for you to know that we can put this in writing so that you can take a look at the proposal. And I got to tell you, Mr. Turner's proposals are outstanding, right? And compare things dollar for dollar, service for service. So it's not just a bunch of talk, right? And because I think that what happens is in this process, there's a lot of communication back and forth. But boy, it's awful nice to see something in writing. Then you can say, oh, I see what these guys mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Appreciate that. Um, very well said. So uh, appreciate you getting on the show today. Jeff, I th thank you for having me. And, yeah. you know, as always, good to see you. And uh, Caitlin, I appreciate everything. Yeah. So we'll, uh, we'll be seeing you soon. Okay. Thanks again. Coming up north, right? Yeah. Yes, sir. I'll be up there soon. I'm working on a couple prospects and a couple of my clients to see if we can get you in there. All right, buddy. Okay. You bet. Take care. Okay. Take care.